What's up everybody? Uh, today's video is all about pink salmon fishing. Hopefully you're down the river getting it done and uh, having a great start to your pink salmon humpy season. But uh, I want to bring you some tips and techniques how to get it done on some Puget Sound rivers, whether you're down on the Puyallup, uh, you know, doing the, uh, doing the Puyallup thing with that no visibility water, or maybe you're on the Nisqually or the Green or the Skagit or the Skycomish or something like that. Uh, fishing where maybe the fish can conceal a little bit better, can track down a lure, uh, really completely different games that we got to talk about. So let's let's jump right into it here. All right, so let's talk about the Puyallup. The Puyallup has so, got such low visibility. I mean, we're talking like one inch, like you can't, couldn't see your hand in front of your face kind of thing. Um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the fishing down there, it's with drift gear. It's all about trying to get your presentation uh, to move really slowly through the water column, give these fish a chance to bite it, or uh, maybe uh, not bite it, right? Do the flossing thing. So uh, this is like, you know, a potential kind of Puyallup setup. We got a couple size 12 corkies, one out hook, a little bit of yarn, right? Right? Y'all can see that. Um, and and we got we got this thing attached to a you know uh, maybe a three foot four foot leader. Sometimes people use like these giant leaders out there on the Puyallup. Man, you don't need to do that. Stick, don't be ridiculous. Stick with a three to four foot something like that. You'll still end up flossing some fish, and you'll still you'll get some bites in there. But because the river's got such low visibility, and humpies are so bad at tracking down lures. I mean. We were, we were on a um, clear river and the sun ha wasn't even up yet and this morning. I'm hitting so many fish as I'm really good, stupid. And uh, th they couldn't even, you know, they couldn't even find our lures until the sun came up. They needed some sunlight to do that, even, even in a river with like three to four feet of visibility. So um, the idea is, you know, you want your offering in the Puyallup moving slowly, you know, you got these slinky weights, this is about a three eighth ounce, a lot of times in the Puyallup, three eighths to one half ounce is all you need, right? And you want it, you want it moving slow, you want to give them a chance uh, to be able to bite it, right? It's gotta be moving slow. Maybe put some scent in that yarn, maybe tip it with a little bit of shrimp, improve your chances of, of bites, right? Versus, versus flossing. Um, so, but let's put that aside for a second because I think the most fun right now fishing for pinks is on rivers with a little bit of visibility, right? So places where, cause they are such aggressive biters. I mean, pinks, uh, you know, they're, uh, in their, their early years are just in these massive schools, right? So they get really like, um, they get really uh, ornery, you know? It's kind of like the people launching at Chill Show, you know, they're just like, hey, stay out of my way, you know? But so, so they get really, they get really pissy, right? And so, uh, if you put a lure kind of in their space, they're real territorial. They're just gonna, just gonna bite it. They're like, oh, get out of my, get out of my space. Maybe you have a, if you have a few friends that you know like that, you know, and they're, they're kind of act like humpies at sometimes. You know, that that's cool. I mean, you know, sometimes fishermen, you know, we can be that way. Um, but uh, it's so much fun. Put a spinner or a jig in front of these humpies. So I'm gonna show you uh, a couple other techniques when you got a river with visibility. Um, what you can do now don't mix these games up if you're on the Puyallup fishing with a pink jig or a spinner like what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you expecting that the fish not gonna find that you're just you're just gonna like you're trying to hook a fish like accidentally like don't don't do that You know keep keep the drift gear on the Puyallup You can even do a little bobber game on the Puyallup. That's cool, too But the lure game you gotta have some visibility these fish kind of suck at finding finding lures and, and so they need some visibility to be able to do that and they need some help this kind of brings us to our next type of presentation here, which is, which is the hardware presentation, the lure, the jig, uh, the spinner, the spoon. Maybe you gotta the the, the the name of the game here is you gotta be moving it slow. It's gotta have a little bit of action, but you gotta be moving it so slow through the water column. Give these these humpies, these pink salmon, a chance to track it down and nail it because they will. They are such aggressive biters. So much fun. Um, if you can get them that way. So, all right, let's move on to the next next presentation option here. Oh, he's on! Oh! oh. oh. See, as soon as I told you, see, you got it. It's, it's all about the most. Keep jigging, keep jigging, don't stop. Don't stop. Gonna hit it on the, yeah. It's not like bait he'll, fishing. He'll hit again. Oh! 
He's on, he's on. All right, so let's talk about, let's talk about jigging, right? Uh, shout out to Slam Jigs here. You know, they make this large profile humpy jig, hoochie skirts, pretty awesome. Uh, humpies go nuts for these out in the salt water, in the fresh water, wherever. Um, but the key to, 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 to the jigging with humpies is it's like, you, you want a, a much smaller motion than might, you, what you might do for say a king salmon or even a coho, right? You can just kind of, you can kind of give it a little, a little twitch twitch, uh, nice slow retrieve. Again, these fish aren't great at like tracking down um, some fast moving thing through the water column. So people who are doing this big jigging motion, you know, it's kind of like, uh, they're probably gonna snag more fish, but man, you get, get kind of a, a dialed in motion that's just nice and, 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 and you know, short range of motion, maybe six inches at a time, kind of quick, twitchy, but also really slow retrieve. Uh, even better if you can keep it vertical, like right underneath your boat or under a bridge. Um, man, you are gonna get just absolutely pounded by these humpies. Oh, I Yeah, there we go. Uh, you can use these jigs in like, I mean, like almost uh, any kind of situation, uh, any time of day, uh, you know, they're gonna bite these things really well if you find a good group of them. So uh, this, this is like the number one probably uh, lure for targeting humpies uh, on the river. And, and this, it is so much fun. Now, I recommend doing this with a, a, a light enough action rod Humpies have really soft mouths, so uh, if you do this with like a stiff raw, like a, your meat stick, you're gonna lose a lot of fish. Uh, I really like a lighter action raw. You can you can use a trout rod. Uh, I like the um, uh, my old G Loomis like IMX GLX series. Just a, an absolute blast. But something with a lot of um, you know slow action uh, that's gonna give a lot of bend. You won't lose nearly as many fish. So. Uh, give this a try. Um, hooked a ton of fish doing this in, in the last uh, last week. It's 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 absolutely fantastic. All right, let's talk about I don't know. Probably my favorite way to uh, catch humpies or a lot of salmon uh, is uh, the spinner, right? The hoochie spinner. So um, I, I actually let me let me get the, a closer look on these right here. So all right, so so these are. Uh, these spinner fishing kits I actually buy from River Fisher, R V R F A S H R dot com. So it's like River Fisher, all the valves removed. Uh, and, and you go here and you can buy these little spinner kits. They have no idea I'm doing um, promoting them or anything like that. I've been buying these for years, put together my own spinner kits. I, I am a huge fan of spinner fishing for salmon. <clears throat> Oh, there was, oh, there was, I was like, there's a bite. And there's so much to share about spinner fishing for salmon that I'll, I'll probably share over, over the next, um, over the next several months as we get into like the river fishing season for coho and these other species. But, um, man, it is so much fun to catch salmon on spinners and, uh, and, and humpies are no exception. Now spinner fishing has a slight advantage over jig fishing for humpies in the right conditions though. Um, and that is because these fish aren't great at chasing down lures. If you work your spinner properly, and by properly I mean like really slowly, um, you can put it up right there in the school of, of pinks and make it so easy for them to just grab uh, the spinner. Uh, it, it is, it's an absolute, absolute blast. A lot of times the pink jigs, they want those pink jigs, but they can't track them through the water column because they're moving too too quickly or too suddenly. And so the advantage with spinners, if you work them correctly, is, and, and the right way to work a spinner, always, always right way to work a spinner is reel them slow enough so that the, 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 the spinner arm is barely moving, barely moving, right? You work them too fast, this thing is just fluttering too fast. And, and you want to you want to go fast, just fast enough where the spinner arm is, is is spinning. And you could see that by watching the, the the rod tip on the end of your rod. You'll see it pulsating, right, versus just just hanging there. Most of these fish are biting in like the top maybe three to four feet of the water column. So you don't even need to let them sink very far. This is just a size three spinner um, that I put together with just just this little coochie squid skirt 
on the end, which, you know, they love, you know, pinks, it drives them crazy. But here's the other thing about the spinner that was a bit of a disadvantage. So the bite for me on this spinner really turned off once the sun fully came up and it was big bright sun. Now if it was overcast, uh, I think it would have just kept killing it. But as um, this is a silver on silver spinner, right? Um, it ran into some problems. It was a little too bright, a little too uh, too bright for, and water temperature is really too high uh, to, to turn on the bite on the, on these pinks. So as the sun came up, the bite on the spinner kind of turned off. It continued on the jigs, um, and, which is why you know you might consider it with uh, using like a black spinner bait or blade or a, or a brass spinner blade. Switch that with, when the full sun comes up, and you'll and you'll be just as successful. It's so much fun getting these fish on spinners. Okay, here's the last thing uh, I'm gonna cover here with regards to pink salmon, which is timing your trip uh, with the tides. So the best place to catch pink salmon on a river is lower on the river when the fish are gonna be uh, bright, chrome, uh, you know, in the best uh, con you know consumption condition uh, possible, right? Which is really important. Pinks up further up river, they turn really fast. Not gonna be nearly as good, even on the smoker, they might just be crab bait. So uh, good to get them down low. Getting them down low though, you need to be thinking about tides. So early on in a run, all salmon basically have the same behavior, which is they the, the biggest push of fish is going to be on that low, t just after low tide, as the ebb uh, turns over to a flood, right? In that first couple hours after <clears throat> after low tide, that's when the biggest push of salmon, new fresh salmon, are coming in from the salt water. And so the best to time your trips around that. And if you're a couple miles from the salt, maybe you need to um, do a little bit of math, right? Like, okay, a low tide's at 8 a.m. These salmon can swim a mile an hour, maybe with pinks. You, if you've got a lot of current in the river, like maybe the Puyallup, maybe you'd knock that down to um, you know, a, a mile every two hours, right? But you do that math and go, okay, if low tide's at 8 a.m., maybe showing up at uh, 11 a.m. or maybe noon is gonna be the ideal time um, to fish that area. So if you fish right during the ebb tide, right, as, as, as uh, just before, um, before that low tide point, you might uh, have a lot, a lot less fish, a lot slower fishing and, uh, and not, as, not as successful as a time. And it, it's super critical uh, as you're learning how to catch pink salmon, which I know a lot of folks are. They're getting on the river for the first time. Maybe you grew up fishing trout, bass, uh, you're spending time in the lakes, you're, you're hitting the river, you wanna uh, catch some pink salmon. It's tough to learn all of these different methods on whatever river you're on if you're not casting at fish, right? The fish will tell you what they want, what's working. Uh, they'll also tell you what they don't want, but if there's no fish there, or very few fish, it's very hard to learn. So time your trips with the tide. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed a uh, pink salmon river fishing 2021 edition. Um, you know, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, lots more content coming, and uh, drop any questions you have in the comments. Love, respond to every comment. Love to see your feedback and questions there. And yeah, until next time, good luck.